Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Simulating Electric Vehicle Drivelines Using the System Software Solution webinar. Thank you for joining. I'm Rohini Sayo, Romax Marketing Campaign Manager, and our presenter today is Christian Kumanjia, Applications Engineer in, within Product Management at Romax Technology. I'll now hand over to Christian and give him a full overview of the webinar. Thank you. Thanks, Rohini. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar. Here's the agenda for this webinar. We'll start with an introduction and give, give some background. Then there'll be an overview of the new electrical machine NVH software capabilities, followed by a short demo of these. After that, we'll look at post-processing of some results. And finally, we'll look at some other software improvements that go along with this and finally conclude and go into our Q&A session. So, just to, for a bit of background, it's worth, worth saying that, that electric machines are a critical part of many rotating machines. They are the future and, and also already the present of automotive technology, as well as many other industries and applications in, for example, wind, rail, marine, aerospace, etc. Bringing the electric and hybrid vehicles to the mass market has highlighted that uh, integrating electric machines into the driveline is, is quite challenging. There are particular challenges related to NVH. Therefore, we, we are releasing new and unique for the market features that, that are in addition to Romax Designer that allow the uh, investigation of, of NVH in, in an integrated system where we are considering both the gear system and the electric motor. This software development is new. It, it is the first time we're, we're releasing capabilities related to electric machines, um, but they do come on the back of many years of uh, research and, and development here at Romax HQ and also University of Sheffield, where we have a, a few members of our R&D team, uh, and also some consulting projects spanning the, the entire design cycle from design through analysis uh, through to prototyping and testing uh, and looking at all aspects uh, of the design in terms of NVH, durability, efficiency and thermal analysis as well as um, electronics and control. So now we, we are in a position to release the first software tools for electric driveline NVH uh, as a result of that. So the current state of the art for electric machine noise simulation. There are a number of FEA packages that allow the analysis of the electric machine on its own. So programs like um, ANSYS and, and JMAC, which consider uh, the electromagnetic effects and on the uh, structure of, of the electric machine. However, they do consider the electric machine on its own and our customer base has actually experienced uh, NVH issues when combining the electrical machine and the gearbox at the point of testing, even if both subsystems were performing well in isolation. So therefore, it is crucial to be able to um, simulate the entire system for NVH analysis. So our software solution considers both the gear system and the electric machines, and therefore we can capture these electromechanical interactions. This also allows uh, considering NVH early on and target right first time design. So really, uh, as the industry drivers, this comes from the need for um, shorter product development cycles, the need for uh, earlier NVH analysis in the design process, reducing of, of testing and, and prototyping cost, reducing the, the overall cost of the, of the product development and then the time it takes. So the unique offering from Romax in terms of software capability, we consider the excitations from the gears um, as originally we were able to. Uh, in addition, we can now consider the electric machine excitations. These are torque ripple, radio forces uh, on the stator and, and also imbalance. We can look at the full system response, including the gears, uh, electric machine and, and housing. We can look at, for example, the response at any node locations, which can represent a virtual accelerometer uh, that can then be used for uh, correlation with test data. We can look at mean square velocity, 
Uh, and we can also do an acoustic export and, and load it in directly into acoustics to predict radiated noise. Uh, a bit more about the excitations from the electric machine. So we have torque ripple, uh, which is a torsional vibration between the rotor and stator. So it, it acts and, and it is, is reacted on both the, the rotor and the stator and pro propagates through, through the entire drive line, through the gears. And we also have radio forces, and these act, again, both on the rotor and stator, but the forces on the rotor cancel out, but the forces on the stator generate complex force shapes and excite the housing. In the bottom right, you can see an animation of these forces. They're quite complex. Each of these points represents the force at a particular tooth or, or slot, and these vary with time and rotate around as the motor rotates. We also consider imbalance when we have an electric machine. These run at, at high speeds, uh, and therefore the rotating radio force exerted on, on the shaft due to its imbalance can be quite high, and the frequencies due to the high speed are, are also in the audible spectrum. The way we apply this, you would simulate the electric machine in, an, in a third-party FEA package in order to obtain the uh, excitations. So the radial state of forces and the uh, torque ripple. Once we've obtained these, we can bring them into the Romax model and apply them through the new capability. And therefore, we can include it in, in our NVH analysis uh, alongside the transmission error from the gears. It is a frequency domain solution, so the radio force excitations are broken down into um, harmonics, as you can see here. The overall excitation is broken down into these three harmonics. So to sum up the solution for the NVH analysis, we are looking at the motor and the gearbox in a single system model. We have all shafts, bearings, gears, the housing, all in a single model, and we're looking at a frequency domain solution, which gives us quick answers and uh, insight. A bit more detail about what the new capability does. It allows us to create an electric machine assembly inside the Romax model. We can then create a concept stator component, which is an FE component. Uh, and we can connect that to the housing through a conformal mesh. We can import electric machine excitation data from third-party tools through a preprocessor. We can define imbalance excitations. And once we have all of these into our model, we can calculate the whole system response to those excitations alongside the usual gear excitations. This uh, new software capability is, is broken down into two new modules. We have the electrical machine structural mod modeler. This is what allows you to add the electrical machine assemblies in the model, create the concepts data, mesh that, and connect it to the housing, and apply static force and torques to the stator and, and rotor. The electrical machine dynamic analysis module allows you to pre-process the externally defined excitation data. Define the electrical machine dynamic excitations also have excitations that vary with speed. So the excitations that we import are a special case of these and view and export vibration response to these excitations. So the workflow is to create the Romax model as, as usual with all shafts, gears and bearings uh, and the housing. Then we create electric machine assembly. We mount the rotor and stator to the shaft and the single axis housing. I'll explain in, in a minute. We can define and measure concept stator. This is optional. We, we could have the stator as part of the housing. We define the stator node connections. We calculate the electric machine excitations in a third-party software, and we, we import these. We define any imbalances, and finally, we run the analysis and look at results. So I'm going to demo the majority of this list, mostly the uh, modeling part, and then we will look at some results after that as well. So I have a model open. This is a two-stage uh, gearbox with a housing and an inverter box, and we have a space for the electric machine. We don't have an electric motor in the model at the moment, so we will model that in now. So I'm just going to add a new assembly and find the 
electric machine component. I'm going to add that to the model. It, it is not currently connected to anything, so I'm going to go to the um, rotor first and connect that to the input shaft. Give it an off offset. Once it is mounted, I can also edit the rotor and give it a mass and inertia. And we we should also specify that it is a uh, uniformly distributed loading and the width is the length of the of the rotor and here we can see that we've mounted it onto the input shaft uh, once we've done that we can also model the concepts data so I'm going to uh, go into the electric machine assembly properties uh, you can see we've mounted the, the rotor and here I can select to add a concepts data I'm going to specify that I will connect this to the gearbox housing and this wizard will take us through the process. We will input some dimensions of the stator, outer diameter, inner diameter, the length which will be the same as the, as the rotor, uh, slot height which is 14 in this case, uh, slot width which is will be 3.5 and we'll have 48 slots or we'll give, give it a, a material as well we've defined the basic dimensions of the stator so it is quite a uh, simple model so that's that's why it's called a concept stator so if I click next this will show us both concepts data and the housing and in red we can see the nodes that that the um, software has found on the housing which it, it, it can connect to we just need to move this stator inside the housing in its proper position and if I hide the housing we can look at just the stator and see um, the nodes on the housing that it will connect to and we can also see them here in this list you can see there's 988 connected nodes so when I click next we will be brought to the measure where we can mesh this data we have some settings for that which I'm not going to go into detail about uh, here so I'm just going to mesh it If I click show nodes and uh, hide some of some other uh, things that are shown and display just the nodes, we can see uh, shown in red again the nodes that are common between the uh, concepts data and the housing. So this, this shows us the uh, conformal mesh that we've created. And if I click finish, click OK and go to the housing we'll be able to see the um, stator incorporated into the housing through a conformal mesh in here we can actually see the nodes on the stator where the radio forces will be applied and if I open the housing and slice through it if 
you'll be able to see that we now have the concepts data connected to the housing. It's all one mesh. And you can also see the um, node connections for uh, the end bearing there and each state tooth where the uh, excitations will be applied. So the next thing to do is to import the excitations. Uh, so this is done again from the electric machine assembly window. You select false and excitation data, go to excitations tab, click import. And we are taken to the uh, excitation preprocessor. I have some data generated from before. I have four points. I'm just going to import three for, for the sake of time. And I'm just going to do 1,000 RPM. Going to import the radial forces first. This is what these look like in, in Excel. They're just the uh, radio force versus time for each tooth for uh, an entire revolution of the electric motor. So if I, I can copy these into the preprocessor. Do the same for the uh, torque ripple. Again, we have one revolution of the electric motor. And when I click OK, we have saved this as one of our operating speeds. So I'm just going to repeat the same for the other two operating speeds. So I will do 5,000 RPM. And 12,000 RPM, which is the maximum speed of this particular uh, electrical machine design. Once I've imported these, I can click Calculate, which will um, process these excitations and show them in the frequency domain. We can see all three operating speeds and their harmonics. We can also look at the overall radial force spectrum. We can see all the harmonics up to the maximum harmonic specified here. And in red, we can see the ones that we are going to extract. So there is one harmonic that it probably we want to include, which is not included. So I'm just going to change that to six harmonics. Click Calculate. So we have included that one as well. Uh, and if we look at the overall torque ripple spectrum, we have a similar situation where we have two harmonics that won't be extracted as it is, so I just need to change the number of harmonics to extract to three. Hit calculate again, and we have included these as well. We can look at a few other graphs. We, we can see the speed variation of the torque ripple harmonics. So, so this is a, an estimate of best fit spline that the software will use to cover the entire speed range. So once I'm done, I can hit import. We can specify the primary state tooth where they begin and end of direction. Just going to leave this as default. And in here we can see some key data about these excitations. And if I go to the, the force tab, 
we can also see that the radio force that's been calculated has has appeared as well. And I just need to specify the static rotor torque. So if I close that and click OK, we have now fully defined the electric machine and its excitations. And we, if, if I go to the load case, uh, we can see that the electric machine rotor is, is there as well. We have the torque that we specified. So, so this is now ready to be analyzed. It would take quite a long time to do this uh, in, in real time, so because the um, housing needs to be condensed, because we are looking at an electric machine which runs at high speed, we would need to condense dynamically to a fairly high frequency. This can take on, in the order of a, of a few hours, so I'm just going to uh, go back, back to the slides and show the results that were previously generated. So to analyze the results, we use the advanced wine analysis tool within Bromax Designer. It is the same tool we use for uh, for gear wine, uh, and as you can see, we, we do have the, the transmission error there. But it, additionally, we now have the imbalance. We have the motor excitations that we've imported, torque ripple and radio forces. Uh, which are automatically um, passed on and, and grouped together. And we can calculate several things just to highlight a few few examples. We can look at the response at the mounts to assess the structure bond noise. We can look at the response at virtual uh, accelerometer locations. So we have a, a few nodes uh, defined. We can look at the mean square velocity of the housing either the entire surface of the housing or a subset of, of nodes, which uh, is defined through a PDF file. You can see we can import one here. And we can also do an acoustic export and look at radiated noise in a, in a dedicated third-party software. So to look at the response of the housing mounts, we just enable those for the response. Uh, in this case, we're looking at, in terms of excitation, we're looking at 48th harmonic of the radial stator excitations and the top ripple together. And we can see we have some peaks at the higher frequencies. We also have some accelerometer positions defined, which we have added as response nodes. We can see where the peaks of the response for those are on these graphs. Uh, we can see which particular frequencies affect which parts of, of the housing, uh, which will give us some insight into areas that can be improved to reduce this response. We can also use this data to correlate to test data. We can also calculate the mean square velocity of the housing. Uh, as mentioned, we can apply an A weighting, which represents the nonlinearity of the human hearing uh, or perceived loudness, which is taken into account. And if we overlay all of the excitations, we can compare and, and see at which fre frequencies, which excitations are the most significant. And on, on this particular graph, the first and second stage transmission error and the motor 48th or the excitations appear to be the highest. Once we've identified certain frequencies that we want to look into more detail, we can generate uh, operating deflection shapes for those and see exactly where the housing is deflecting the most, which will give us some indication of what can be improved in the design. So uh, for example, here we can see that the uh, inverter box is responding quite strongly to the 48th harmonic of radial force and, and torque ripple of the electric motor. We could maybe uh, introduce some ribs or, or some other uh, way of stiffening this up. We can see that the fins on the outside of the motor housing have a quite, quite a high mean square velocity at around 8,500 RPM. Uh, we can see the response to uh, lower frequencies, again, uh, to the motor, motor excitations. And we have some, again, 
movement of the fins at high frequencies above 10,000 RPM to the radial force 40th harmonic. We can also see that the uh, end plate of the motor housing is, is moving, so we, we could probably improve that to reduce this peak here. We can see at the top end of the, of the speed we get high response to unbalance. Again, a peak coming from the first stage gear set transmission error. Uh, we can see the inverter box is, is vibrating quite a lot, which will is likely to produce a, a lot of radiated noise, uh, even though it's fairly far away from the rest of the housing, it is responding very strongly. Again, some response to unbalance at lower speeds. So essentially we can look at each of the excitations or, or all of the excitations together in a single environment. Uh, we can look at the gear mesh transmission error, electric machine torque ripple and radio forces uh, as well as unbalance, all simultaneously in a single model of the entire system. And of course we can also uh, refer back and look at durability and efficiency at the same time and make sure we're not compromising any of those as well. So just to mention a couple of other small improvements that come with this, as already partially mentioned, we've improved the unbalance. We can define the unbalance including the ISO standard now or balance quality grades. We have a new FE component called the single axis housing which is essentially a, a uh, housing that has a, an axis that we can mount things on. We can mount uh, static forces and torques and dynamic excitations and this is to accommodate the ele electric machine excitations. We can also in the post processor for advanced wine uh, we can look at tangent to surface response and we also have the ability to have speed dependent general excitations which is what the radio forces and torque ripple are. To summarize the uh, key features of this development are the ability to model an electric machine. We can automatically create and mesh concept electric machines data. We can import excitations from third party software for electromechanical analysis. We can consider torque ripple, imbalance and radio force shapes. And we can look at the response of the whole system to the electric motor excitations alongside the uh, gear system excitations in a fast and flexible frequency domain solution with some advanced post-processing analysis tools that will give us insight into what can be improved in the design in terms of NVH. So the benefits are the ability to evaluate the NVH performance of the entire system of electric machine and gearbox as early as possible in the design and prevent incorrect design decisions early on which promotes the right first time development process. This is also our first electric machine capability being released so, so you can expect to see much more in the coming months and, and years. This concludes the presentation part of the webinar, so I'm just going to hand back over to Rohini for the Q&A session. Thank you very much, Christian. I hope everyone found the webinar interesting and informative. Now let's begin. We have Rob Hallhouse, our R&D simulation engineer, who just come to join us for the Q&A debate. I'll just pass it over to him. Thank you, Rohini. I've had a number of people ask about exactly how the uh, excitations are calculated. I should clarify at this point that there is no electromagnetic analysis being performed within the Romax designer software as part of our current offering. Instead, we are offering an interface for users of other third-party electromagnetic FE analysis packages, for example, ANSYS, Maxwell, JMAG, Flux, FEMM, to name but a few, to continue using their preferred software and use their preferred package to calculate the excitation, which is then manually imported into the Romax Design software. As Chris demonstrated, this is currently a fairly user-intensive process with a lot of manual copy and paste. In future releases, we are looking to make a more streamlined interface between designer and other third-party packages.
Another question we've had is whether or not it is possible to perform condensation in third-party packages. Yes, this is completely possible. As Chris mentioned, the condensation is a particularly time-intensive task in this analysis. Models for electric vehicles will typically be quite detailed and need condensing to quite high frequencies, and it is possible to perform this analysis in a third-party package for example, Nastran or ANSYS, and then re-import the calculator's mode shapes into Romax Designer. A question asking how we calculate the, the uh, mean square velocity. In this calculation, Romax Designer calculates the uh, vector normal to the surface on each node of the housing mesh. From that vector, it calculates the velocity at each individual node and then takes a mathematical average either of every node or of nodes specified by the user. Another question is whether the response on the state of teeth can be calculated. Yes, this is uh, perfectly possible. It's up to the user to select any nodes within the Romax designer model, including bearing locations, locations on the mounts, or locations on the outer face of the uh, housing. So yes, it's possible for the response at any point to be calculated. One more question. There's a question whether the concept data, once meshed, can be replaced by a different data design. Yes, the concept data is intended as a way to quickly import a representative FE mesh. However, if the analysis wants to use a more detailed state of geometry, then this can be performed as part of the FE import process. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have right now, but Rob will answer any remaining questions by email. So yes, we will personally email you with your answers. Thank you for those at the time to send a question through. We would like to touch upon our Romax Global Forums. Join us at one of them this year as we'll be covering electromechanical technology integration in more detail. You will see your, our electric machine modeler in action. We'll show you the latest development and new capability and how simulation tools are being developed to simulate and reduce noise from electric and hybrid vehicles. So you have our North America Forum on the 14th, 15th September in Michigan, our EU Forum on the 27th and 28th of September in Germany, our China Forum 18th of October in China, and lastly, our Korea Forum on the 20th of October. So for more information and registration purposes, please visit our events page on our website under Global Forums. If you do have any further questions which you've not sent through today, you can email marketing at romaxtech.com and a Romax rep will get back to you as soon as possible. You can visit the webinar section on our website for information on upcoming webinars. We have our demonstrating electric driveline design process using a case study webinar presented by our head of R&D, Dr. Barry James, on Wednesday, 21st September at 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. BST time. We'll also be sending e-shots out on our upcoming electrification webinars in October, so please watch out for those. We hope you'll be joining one of our future sessions. Thank you and goodbye.